All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to take a little look at getting a pass rush out of the tight front. Uh, I saw some things on Twitter. Some uh, friends of mine and some guys that I know that coach back up north were posting a couple questions, and they were asking about pass rush out of tight. So we'll do a little video on that, checking it out today. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline Replay System we use. Baker Sporting Goods, the company we use for players' gear, coaches' gear, our uniforms and other things that we need come from Baker Sports. Dome Headwear, which is the uh, hat provider of PlayFest Football and the school that I'm currently working at. They make all of our hats for us, customized. We design the hats, they make them for us. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have them in our weight room. Just Play Football, the playbook software that we use and uh, the play drawing tool that I use for um, my Patreon site and any webinars that I, uh, I'm sorry, any clinics that I speak at. High and tight ball security training aid, auditory feedback, have to hold it in the right position to hear the beep. When you hear the beep, you know that you've got the ball secured properly. TD Publishing, which is a company that distributes videos and books to help educate coaches and, and continue to grow uh, the game for coaches that are looking for more knowledge. They've got a recent series, uh, six-part series that you can check out from Ferris State, the Division II National Champions. And then Coach Tools, which is going to be a player evaluation tool, a player grading system that's customizable for you. Take your grading system, put it into templates that make it a lot easier for you to use and something that the kids can understand and probably read in today's world with technology, something the kids can, um, you know, kind of understand better and, and get more information out of rather than that old school, you know, kind of uh, handwritten on a yellow pad grading system. All right, so... You know, in general, the tight front is really not designed for pass rush. The tight front is designed versus, you know, 10, 20, maybe 11-ish uh, personnel teams, or sometimes even uh, 21. It's designed to take away interior gaps and push the ball wider to the C gap and out. It's designed to help in the RPO game where instead of, you know, the old-fashioned 4-2-5 or 3-3 three, three stack or even some of the 3-4 uh, reduction front stuff, if you get two by two or you get a, a, an area where you have uh, two open or two removed and you've got a B gap that's open and somebody that's got to fall in, you've got to figure out whether you want to call an, a line stunt, some type of auto stunt where you can let your end, um, you know, give your end kind of a two-way go based on the blocks of the tackle to where your end can read and close the B gap out for certain blocks and schemes or you can stunt the end over there and bring a secondary contain uh, stunt if it's passed, but you've got to do something to take away the B gap because there is a conflict between the B gap run defender and he has a certain pass coverage, right? If you're still trying to play zone coverages or pattern match coverages. So the tight front takes away the B gaps. All right, so what it does is it takes away the B gaps, and if you can win in the B gap and you've got the nose, all right, playing one A gap, whether by moving them to an A gap or lagging them to an A gap, and an inside backer or two inside backers that are going to take care of the other A gap, you've got the four interior gaps covered with four players. The ball is going to go and work its way wider. The issue is the 4i is never really in a good position all right, to rush the passer. And when you're playing tight front, you're really, your first thought is not rushing the passer. So the tight front is not something you would go to to generate pass rush. Normally what you're going to have to do in the tight front is you are going to have to add a fourth rusher from somewhere. All right, so the first choice for us that we like to that we like to use for me is if we are playing our three high structure here I do not count the mic in any of my coverages alright so the mic for us is not counted in any of our split field coverages he's actually replaced in theory by the middle safety so for us the first way that we are going to help our pass rush is we are going to use the mic in a couple different ways alright so when you're dealing with the four eyes right now Obviously, from an inside position, they are not in a great spot to win in pass rush. Even if they have to try and versus pass set, they had to try and ricochet outside for contain. All right, it's still not really advantageous to win for the four eye. The nose is usually going to get some type of half slide or turn scheme where he's probably going to end up being double. So, when you're rushing for the tight front, for us, we treat it more as a quasi eight-man drop first all right now we don't play all eight-man drop coverages so i said i don't include the mic and the reason is i'm going to use the mic in a couple different ways if i'm looking to add to the pass rush all right one of the things that we do the first thing that we do is we use the mic as a secondary contain player so instead of ricocheting the four eyes outside for contain 
I'm going to let my four eyes win versus pass sets wherever they can win. Get to the quarterback in the you know path of least resistance or whatever path you feel like you can win to the quarterback. And then I'm going to use the mic to pull up the quarterback to either side. So the mic becomes a guy that is secondary contained. And if I let the four eyes win inside, if they get you know, maybe a, maybe they get a full slide where the tackle slides, but the guard inside slides away from them to double a nose and pick up a backer from the backside or whatever the protection may be. Well, if he can beat that tackle that's got him one on one, if he can beat him inside, I'm going to let him beat him, beat him inside because I'm going to recreate the contain player with the mic. So that's one of the first things we do. It's not exactly a drop eight coverage per se because we use the mic as a contain player. Now the second thing we'll do, and this is very similar to old school 3-4 teams, the second thing we'll do is we'll plug the mic somewhere. So we'll go ahead and on the snap of the ball, we'll add the mic somewhere. And that could be anywhere you want based on a tendency. It could be away from the back, it could be to the back, it could be away from the side that you think the center is going to turn. So some teams will wait for the center to turn, all right, and once the center turns and slides, now they'll add away from the center, all right. They, especially if it's a two linebacker middle like the old 3-4 schemes because if the center turns that means he's usually turning to the side of the backer he's assigned to so if we wait for the center to turn and then we send the mic we're thinking we can get the mic on the back in a one-on-one -on -one situation okay so the next thing we can do is we can add the mic as a plug player and we can add him as a fourth rusher all right and now to the side that I plug the mic I would move Okay, if I was plugging the mic immediately, I would move the four eye. If this was a pass rush deal, okay, then I wouldn't move the four eye. What I would do is I would tell the mic to wait for the center to turn, and then when the center turns, we're going to rush the air, the B gap opposite of that, okay? Um, but usually when doing that, if I'm going to plug him and he's not a secondary contained player, then I've got to kind of move the end. Sometimes if it's a passing down, I might move both ends, or I might even not play tight front, obviously. The goal of today's video is to talk about pass rushing from the tight front and why it's a little bit of an issue. So using the mic as a fourth is a way to do it. All right, bringing a guy up off the edge. So for us, if we wanted to use the mic off the edge, we could bring the mic up and bring him off the edge and generate, all right, that if you want to look at it as mid front or however you want to look at the terminology. Now the mic's off the edge, and with the mic off the edge, maybe I'll send the nose and the other anchor outside and now we create almost that over front or under front however you want to look at it but bringing the mic off the edge as a fourth is a way for us to do it so we can secondary contain with the mic and give the four eyes a chance to win wherever they want we can plug the mic and make the four eyes have to ricochet out for a contain we can bring the mic off the edge and now we can keep one four eye inside bring the nose away and the other anchor away and get to more of a over or under philosophy depending on what the strength of the front was and where the three technique ended up all right with if there's no tight end then over under kind of you know is, is almost the same thing without a tight end because there's an open b gap there's an open a gap you can't really tell if it's reduced or not because you don't know where the three-man surface was if the three-man surface was there all right and we ended up with you know h8 five nine three five on the back or whatever something in accordance with that we look like an under front reduction if we plug to a three technique and move the four eye to a six and the nose away and the other end away, now we would look like an over front. All right, so obviously adding a fourth for us, we start containing a fourth. So the mic is a contained player. All right. And then after, after we, if we need to generate a little bit more pressure, we'll use the mic as a fourth, either as a plug away from the turn or off the edge in kind of the mid front theory where a lot of teams bring the jack up or the only reason we use the mic is because we don't, when we play our three high, he's not counted in our coverages. So he's the easiest guy for us to kind of move around a little bit and use him where we may need to use him because it doesn't change anything for us in the coverage structure, right? But within the tight front itself, the tight front is not conducive to pass rush, especially if you initially start from rushing three, dropping eight, all right? It's not there for a pass rush. So when you're playing those coverages, you know that you have to cover. You know that that quarterback may have a little bit extra time, but you've got an extra drop -up. All right. If you want your four eyes to be aggressive, if you've got really good four eyes and you think that they can win some one-on-ones even if they're in a four eye, if you want them to be aggressive and stay inside to win, now you've got to use the mic as a secondary contained player because you're going to have a short edge on either side. 
So when we let the four eyes win wherever they want to, we use the mic as a quarterback spy secondary contain player because now we don't need the mic in coverage. We let the four eyes be aggressive. The quarterback steps up, leaves, does whatever he wants, and we only have a three-man rush and we don't have a great edge to it. We know the quarterback can get out. Now we use the mic as a pull-up player, secondary contain player, add-on rusher, however you want to look at it, because the tight front by itself with the alignments of the four eyes is not made to rush the passer. All right, so when you're talking about generating a pass rush out of tight, it's usually going to involve bringing a fourth and then bringing a fifth or a sixth with pressures. Out of the tight front itself, the generic simple tight front, you're really not going to generate a ton of pass rush when you're sitting with two four eyes, okay? Now, you'll create some, some decent matchups because a lot of times, if you have any, any version of edge pressure, they may have to fan this and you'll get five one-on-ones and you'll get the center one-on-one -on -one with the nose and the guards will fan to the four eyes. So if they had to fan this protection, you're gonna get one-on-ones, you gotta win a one-on-one -on -one somewhere. If they full term, or if they, even if they, even if you look at half slide protection, as an offensive guy, if you slide away from the back and you half slide this, well, since there's a four-eye backside, the tackle's got them big on big, it almost looks like a full slide. It almost becomes a version of a full slide because even though you're working half-slide rules, because you have a four-eye, all right, that tackle that's got to set the four-eye man-to-man has almost got to set him inside that hard that it looks almost like a full slide. So now you are still getting kind of that one-on-one -on -one matchup away from the slide for your four-eye to win wherever he can win. So if this kid has to set him that hard inside, your four eye may be able to win back outside. But with us, the, the Mike is a secondary contain player. I'm okay if the, if the four eye can win in here and cause some damage in there and the quarterback gets out, well, that's where the Mike's going to be because that's his job. We don't count him in any coverages. The only time we use the Mike in coverage is some of our drop eight stuff. Okay, so from the tight front itself, it's going to be very difficult to generate, tight, uh, to generate pass rush. You're going to have to add a fourth, whether it be an interior plug guy, old school 3-4 versus 2-2, two two, you plug an inside backer. You can plug him away from the turn of the center, or you can add him off the edge, kind of like the mid-front stuff. Okay, so tight front was not made for pass rush. That's something you got to understand. Hopefully this helps you understand how you can generate a pass rush out of tight front, how we try to do it, all right, at, and when I use the tight front, the ways we try to do it. So. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn those notifications on so you know every time we do a video or we go live. Thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like it or don't like it, it helps us understand the content that you guys want and how we deliver it. Always leave a message. I get back to every message I possibly can. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. And I will see you guys next time.